Hello there. Thank you for joining us. My name is Omar Jaju and uh, this is The Chronicle. Welcome to this exclusive interview with the interim party leader of Citizens Alliance and CEO of uh, Emanic Consulting, Mr. Dominic Mendy. Uh, Dominic, thank you so much for having us here at your office in, in Carnifin. You're more than welcome. And welcome to The Chronicle. Thank you. All right. So, Citizens Alliance comes to play, comes to the field. Some will say it's timely to come, and uh, some will say it is the better time to have a party that may be, may be the solution to some of the problems that Gambians do have now. But first of all, why Citizens Alliance? Well, you know, every party, I guess, not only Citizens Alliance, but I think every party is born out of need. Uh, this is a nation in transition. And... Uh, we are still grappling with the problems of development, problems of poverty, problems of insecurity. And therefore, uh, it has become evident that we have not been led by people and teams of people who have it what, it, what it takes in terms of experience and knowledge to offer solutions that will transit us from poverty and at least put us on the pathway to development. And uh, as a result of that, we thought that it is a, a time for us to establish a platform where Gambians will come together and find themselves in terms of their ability to express themselves in what they are able to give to the country in terms of their knowledge, in terms of their experience. And hopefully, this country will now begin, like other countries, even the, our sister country just next to Senegal, which is an emergent economy now. At least we put ourselves in the pathway to development and be able to, 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 to create economic freedom for our people because I tell you what, it's development that brings about security. The greatest insecurity of a nation is when its citizens feel hopeless. Yeah. And that is critically where we are as a nation now. So how does this party came to being? How well, was this, it this, this party came to being. I, I, you know, you know, I've been in government before. You know I know that. you are a former minister. Of yes, freedom. and 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 I left government because I was reshuffled out of government because of my insistence to remain who I was as a person, professionally and ethically, and didn't, that didn't go well with that government, and so I was reshuffled, reshuffled out of government, and I I made sure I stayed out of government. I did not even for for almost eighteen years even attend a government program, even though I was always invited like former ministers. But I, I decided that I didn't share values with that government anymore. And so it was in my interest to stay away and wait for an opportunity to, to, be, to be more useful. You know, and, and I think the opportunity came when we, all of us, all Gambians, decided that enough was enough with the previous government and they had to go. And so since then I have been looking for an opportunity of creating a platform like this, an opportunity meaning looking for people, like-minded people. And I came across Dr. Ismail Asise, you know, and, and, and he came to me, he defaulted to me as a very brilliant young man, very educated young man. He, he defaulted to me also as a very well-meaning young man. And, and, and we, 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 we had interactions and I thought that this was somebody with whom I could go into partnership to create this platform, which I have long wanted to create. And so, together, we invited several people of various ethnicities and various regions, even diasporans. And so, we, a year ago, we started the process of setting up uh, the Citizens Alliance Party, and today, it's a party. It's a party. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be coming to Congress very soon. We'll come to that later. But uh, give us a brief 
definition of leadership you talk about leadership what is what is what is your main purpose you know as a leader let me tell you this leadership you know i i, I lectured leadership at the university of the gambia i also lectured uh, leadership uh, for MDI in their ICM postgraduate program, that's the master's program. And of all the definitions of leadership, the one that has influenced me more is the fact that leaders influence. So you can define leadership as influence because leadership as, leaders are supposed to influence what others do you don't do it for them you influence them you influence cleanliness you influence ethics you influence purposefulness you influence productivity and and how do you influence it you manifest it in the way in which you live and carry yourself and so because of that manifestation people endear you to themselves for not, not for your skin or for your looks, but for those characteristics. And you, you begin to, they begin to, to behave like you. That is what leaders should be. So that when you become a leader, every, everybody else becomes a leader because they imitate you. So if you have a good leader, the leader, the leader takes responsibility. So his good characteristics become manifest in almost everybody in the country. And if he is good, then everybody else behaves in that manner. And eventually, of course, the country becomes a better country. That is exactly what leadership is all about. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us uh, about a high performing team that you've built, passionately built. And uh, what are the most important principles you had to follow? I am glad you call it the high performing team, is it? Yes. Thank you very much. I am honored. But well, let me tell you this, we, we started this process less than a year ago, and today we are a party. Um, we, we got together initially, two, three, four, and it grew up to a point we are almost 50 in number. And then, for some it was a bit too slow, and they backed off waiting for the hype and the momentum to build up. Mm. And then we shrunk right up to maybe 10, 20 again. But we knew that that is how organizations grow. But how was it like that? Why was it like that? that that's how organizations grow, because when an organ idea is thrusted out there, all people who subscribe to the idea pick it up, and everybody's interested, and everybody comes. And then now you have to structure the organization. Remember that organization, the Citizens Alliance, is not Dominic Mendy. It is not Ismaila. It is not William Jai. It is not all of these people. It is everybody else put together. And so we must be able to put an organization that resonates in its processes and procedures in such a manner that if I fall dead today, Citizens Alliance will still be able to have its meetings. It will still be able to do its business. Of course, they will sympathize with my family that I'm dead, but they will be able to go on as if nothing has changed. That is what you call organizational development. So going through that process, it goes through a formation process and you establish these systems and procedures and then you normalize them. It goes through a norming process, okay? And then it goes through a maturity process and a recreation process. So, you know, during the norming process, for some people, it's a bit slow, but after the launch, the hype is up again. <laughs> you know, everybody is interested. So now, again, it depends on us now to decide on how to, 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 to where to raise and maintain the pulse <laughs> of, of the party, the rhythm, you know? So that, that's natural processes of growing up for organizations, and I guess also for, as for individual persons. Uh, what's your assessment on the level of uh, the political field in this country? I know that I know that there are many political parties. We are number eleven, yeah. and you know eleven are two, yeah. two vertical uh, sticks huh? yeah. buried into the ground. Okay. 
Okay. And what does that look like? It looks like a gate. Okay. Huh? Yeah. So we are, we are the gate into development and transformation of the Gambia. Mm -hmm. You know? And I know that uh, almost all political parties, except ourselves, ours, mm -hmm. belongs to an individual. Any party that you call today, they will tell you, this man's party. Call any party. APRC? Yeah, Jamesh party. That's why they still. Yeah, UDP. UDP. UDP, Usainu's party. But what, what makes them Usainu's party? What but that's it? what it is. What makes but it, today, what makes it Usainu's party? Today, even though I am the, the interim leader and party chairman, CA is not my party. So what makes uh, UDP Usainu's? Because the, the person who creates the party, by default becomes the, the flag bearer of the party. Usainu creates UDP? Well, that's what we know. Okay. And all other parties, they are creators of the flag bearer, especially of course GAP, but GAP appointed a flag leader, a, 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 a flag bearer. We are not going to appoint a flag bearer. So who created uh, Citizens Alliance? The Citizens Alliance was a joint creation of myself, Ismaila, and, and a few other people. A few other people like who are? Like William Jai, Ade Taylor, you know. Uh, come by, you know, there are several, several people. Are they based in the Gambia or out? Yeah, they, they all based in the Gambia, but we, we also have some of them, like Ali Jain and Yaman Jai. These people are in the diaspora. Specifically where? The UK, America? Uh, some in America, some in Europe. One of them in, no, no, let, let me not say one, one prominent one in, in Switzerland. You know, they, they are everywhere, really. Uh, in the past, uh, I'm now, you're talking about still the, the leadership qualities uh, for, for this country. How have you responded to, evaluated and even learned from mistakes? You, your own, and those of your teams? It depends on what mistakes you are talking about. In the creation of our party, we know that Personalizing a party creates problems of leadership in the party. And when they form government, it continues to create problems. And so that is why we have not personalized our party. That is why we have created our party on the basis of popular participation. Because those who came and subscribed to the idea are many. And the same people who subscribe to the idea, including many other supporters and sympathizers, contributed to the money that registered the party. That is why we do not have anybody, and I can make that statement here over and over, nobody will stand right in the streets here and say, no, don't, don't mind them, I bankroll them. It will never happen. Because I paid, the people who came to those meetings paid, the people in the regions even contributed money. For what? For the one million dollars for the registration. So we've collected from as many people as possible. So we, ca we do not owe an obligation to one person. We, are, we, are, we owe an obligation to everybody. So I cannot turn around tomorrow and say, no, no, no. Remember, I paid for this party. And you know that has always been a problem for parties here. But why should Gambians trust Citizens Alliance? No, no, no. Maybe you should ask Gambians why they trust us if to contribute but, to our registration. But not all, not all Gambians contributed. No, not all Gambians will ever vote for us either. There is no government, there is no government for which every citizen votes for, but some citizens. So why do you think a person out there who hasn't contributed uh -huh. should contribute? Uh -huh. Why? What would you tell the person? Perfect. The person out there who has not contributed because he did not know that we existed mm. will now know that we existed. He will go to our website, which is www.citizensalliance.gm, and he will find out from our website who we are and what we stand for and what solution options we have offered to provide for the development and transformation of this country and the approach that we want to take in terms of implementing the solution options. And he, he's a human person, he has gray matter, 
and he will analyze this within the context of the environment he operates. That is, he will make, compare it with what he has. And of course, we think that if he does that well, he will inform himself appropriately that we are the better option. Uh, what would you tell a person who is down there at Koina or even Katong who can't access your website? Convincing him, what will you tell him? That is true, that is important. It is important because, well, there are many people who would uh, uh, access our website from Koina today in, to, in, in today's Gambia. Mm -hmm. But um, not everybody is literate enough to be able to conceptualize and read and understand what's on the website. Mm -hmm. And that is why during our formation process, we actually established structures in all the regions. In all the regions, not all the districts or the wards, but in all the regions. And what we have done, we have taken the Gambian political map of the wards, the various wards of the Gambia. And we have actually, based on population distributions across the districts and the wards, we have re rezoned them so that we have redivided them into component zones that are manageable in terms of being able to build political structures. And so, if you watch what happened in our launch, people came from all the regions, all of them, and that was why we had goodwill messages from every region. And those regional representatives actually represented the various districts in the region. So we have had meetings, we have had community outreaches with people, and we have had, even before our launch, we have had two town hall meetings, and these are national town hall meetings held here in the Greater Banjul area, and people were ferried from all the regions to discuss the structures as we developed them. So that today, our constitution as we have it, is a constitution of our party as developed, not by a Dominic and a few others here, but with the input of all the people from the regions. So this structural setup of CA is what takes us to Koina, to the person who cannot read and cannot interact and with the internet to talk to him about our structures. And that is why those people were represented in our lunch. And they came and spoke all languages. They spoke Sarahule, they spoke Fula, they spoke Manjago, they spoke Jola, they spoke every language that is spoken in this country. So that's, that's how we access those. What's your take on the current leadership of President Barra? Well, let me, let me say this. You know, it's good to be very honest. And uh, remember, Barra is a citizen of the Gambia. And he's well-meaning, like any other citizen. We all belong in the Gambia, and I'm sure Barra does not want to go live anywhere but in the Gambia. So if he has it his way, the Gambia will be the most developed country. And I think the same for Usainu. I think the same about every leader of every other party. Okay? Now, I know that before Barrow came into power, it might not have been possible for us to have had this type of interview. Because Citizens Alliance would not have been alive. And if Barrow was the leader at the time, I mean, the leader at the time, we would not have even been discussing what I think about his leadership. You know, I could not, at, during the Ayajamis time, be discussing here in the Gambia what I thought about the Ayajamis leadership. So, Baro came into power, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, he, he has agreed to be led by what we all fought for, democracy. And that is why you tune any radio station, you hear people play music that does not say very well about Barrow, but he doesn't, he doesn't arrest those people. He doesn't take them to prison, you know, and music like that continues to be played, which is good. So for him, that's a listening push so that he understands what people think and what people. So I think Barrow is a Democrat. I personally think he is a Democrat. I think he does not have the cognitive capacity to be able to provide development options for this country. Uh, I think uh, his experience and his know-how 
uh, still leaves uh, a lot to be desired in terms of being able to deliver in that direction. But these are some of the ways I think about him. I think he's a very pleasant person. I think he's a, he's a, he's a very good Democrat, he's very tolerant. Uh, but I also think he has challenges. These are professional, cognitive, educational challenges. The young people in this country are now deeply engaged into politics, especially during elections, uh, like ever before. How will you engage these people? I mean, how will you engage young people in this country when it comes to your party system? Our party is a young people's party. I, I might surprise you because I'm 60 plus, you know. Yeah, you are 60 plus. Yeah, so I'm not young. You are not young. Perfect. But I'm the oldest man in this party. And in fact, my, the age difference between me and the next youngest is almost 10 years plus. So if you, if you check our party, you will, you will notice that. Even the IEC noted that and they made reference to that. So our party, first and foremost, is the rallying point for all youths. And that was why the youths actually led the launching, and you saw that. How do you, how do you rally youths? You have, if, to rally youths, you have to address the issues that speak to the needs of the youths. The youths in the Gambia are in need of quality education and formation. Last year, about six point something percent of the total number of people who took the WAS exam qualified to go into higher education. So that means 94% did not qualify to go into higher education. Is that not serious? Is that good return for investment? That's not. It is not. If you invest money, invest money, and you borrow maybe at 15% and invest it, do you expect to earn less than 15%? If you earn less than 15%, you are not making money, you are losing money. So if you borrow at 15 and invest, you expect to make 20%. But in our case, we have invested money and our return is just 6%. Is that not serious? That is serious. So that is what speaks to because those children now, the 96% will have to go look for remedial education through skills training and other vocational training. And that is the way they will develop their livelihood as adults. Are they not already condemned to poverty? They are. So we want to be able to bring about an educational system that will ensure that, you know, as an example, for every level in the continuum of education, from grade 9 to grade 10, from grade 12 to higher education, at least 50 or 60 percent will transition into the next level because they have proved through exams that they have the capacity and have passed and qualified to transition to the next level. That means the number of worse takers who would have transitioned into higher education would have, would have been about 50 or 60 percent of those that took the, took the exam. That way you are now thinking about how to deal with the other 50 or 40 percent. Maybe 50 percent of that can go into technical education. And other 40% go into vocational education. And eventually, you have a very well-trained youth core who have the capacity and are empowered to look for jobs or to go into investment and get the investment or get the jobs or succeed in the investments as a result of the quality education that they went through. Brilliant ideas. The problem now comes to implementation and when it even comes to that. Mm -hmm. How realistic is your party in making sure that all that you've highlighted comes to fruition Look, immediately? Let, let, nobody, let nobody fool you. There are challenges in governance. One, there are funding challenges. 
there is already a very high budget deficit. You know that. Okay? So we depend for budget financing on a very small domestic revenue base. A significant grant base and domestic and international borrowing. Unless we expand our economic base, that will continue to be developed. We understand that. So if we tell you that when we come, we are going to bring development immediately, we will be lying to you. It is not possible. But when we come, what we will change is the system of governance that will ensure economic expansion. And gradually, we will begin to see the fruits of that expansion and system change institutionalization begin to ripen and fall. And how do you intend to do that? Talking about the uh, system change institutionalization. Of course, the, the thing is, look, what, what's, what's a system? Look, when the government, this government came into power, there was a government here, isn't it? And we did not agree with the system of that government. That was why we took it out of power. When this government came, you know what they did? They just kept the ministries that that government had. So that means the ministries were okay. The nature, structure, and number of ministries to this government is okay. So Yajam's ministries were fine. So what was wrong? What was wrong? Good. So was it Yajam's face then? Because he's the only one that's out. His system is still, is still here. What was wrong? No, no, I'm, 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 we are talking about the system change. Okay. So now what we will do differently is that we will come and we will show you that some of the ministries are not appropriately structured the way they are. And probably we have too many ministries. I'm not telling you this is what we do, we'll do, but I'm telling you these are things we could do, you know? And, 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 and when we come, we could say, look, in government, what is our biggest problem in government? It's slippage, like revenue. We cannot collect as much revenue as possible because there is a lot of revenue slippage. How do you do that? The, if you, the Gambia is one of the few countries in the world where you go look for, I mean, the Ministry of Fisheries was born yesterday. Yeah. And they are talking about their hard copies of their files being burnt and their, some of their computers being, being burnt, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it means that is all they, they have. Is that not catastrophic? Which country will run like that? There should have been a database in this country and there should have been a uh, data Inter uh, interactive data exchange. So that even if one ministry loses all its assets because from a fire, that data would have been hosted on a website elsewhere and backed up somewhere else. But Gambia does not have a thing like that. Go look for my job. My job in Ematic Consulting is research. Attempt to do research here and look for data. And you go to any public archive you don't find the data there. It's not because they don't want to give it to you. It's because the way in which data is managed is such so that data is nowhere. So these are the systems and processes that will change. And once those processes change and are institutionalized, then you know a system and a procedure does not understand a face. It does not recognize a face. All it recognizes is that you meet these, it accepts it. You do not meet these conditions, the system locks you out. Mm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So that is corruption, corruption proof. So it eliminates corruption, it eliminates inefficiencies, it eliminates lethargy, you know, it eliminates nepotism. So these are some of the, the things that we will bring to bear on how this country is governed. And these are some of the ways in which 
we think we can transform this country. And it will take a bit of time. Honestly. A bit of time, so like if you are not many promising years. anybody, like they have been promised by other parties, that we will transform this country in 90 days. There is nobody who can transform but the which nation party, in 90 days. Which party days. promised that? No, no, no. That's not my call. But you say the party? I say promised by other parties. Which parties? No, I'm not saying political parties. You are a party, somebody else is a party. I we are all I parties said, to this country. I, I said it? No, no, no. Of course you didn't say that. Then, then Citizen Alliance said it. I said what? You promised that? Promise what? That, that other things that you're saying. What other things? I don't know, you said. Oh, well, no, no, <laughs> I want to hear your question. The internet and technology uh, have flattened the political field, no doubt about that, and allowing for collective uh, decision making in new ways. Um, how will you balance the ability to have more uh, participatory democracy and uh, the need for executive decision making? You know, decision making, uh, the effectiveness of decision making is based on the amount and quality of information that the decision makers has. Of course, informed by his ability to process that information. What the internet has done is that it enables a more diverse and broad, broader uh, participation in providing input into decision making. And so, really, for me, there is no tussle between social media, if I, if I may borrow that one, and social me media's influence on decision making and how how uh, the cut-off period for, for a decision on a decision. Because for me, really, every input is an input, or every comment is an input into the decision. Even whereas you do not use that comment to, to enable your decision, it enables you to rethink your decision, even if you don't like the comment. Because a comment may be favorable or unfavorable. But even whereas it is unfavorable, it actually rings a bell. And so it gives you the opportunity to rethink. And if you do rethink your decision, you can even make it better. When is the Congress for the The election? Congress is going to be around February. I think so. Because we need this time to help our re uh, regional structures uh, settle and then educate the membership, expand and educate the membership on the structure of CA and on the ideals of CA and allow them to, to, to find their feet in them in terms of being able to say, no, 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 I do not agree with that. No, I agree with it. But no, 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 I think it's better done that way. And we, our, we have mechanisms for listening into that and perfecting as we move on. And then by the time, so that by the time we go to Congress, they understand what it is they are going into. So they are not going to come into Congress because Dominic is their friend or he was their lecturer or he was their whatever. And so they say, oh, there's nine them, tell Dominic, no, 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 they don't have to japale Dominic. They have to japale themselves. And that is based on what they believe, that Dominic is the right leader or somebody else is the right leader. And that's the person they should vote for, for Secretary General, for Treasurer, for Flag Bearer, for whatever for chairman, you know. Mm. How do you think Gambians perceived politics? I know, having been in politics for quite a while now, I know that Gambians understand what politics is. Really? If anybody thinks that Gambians do not understand politics, that person will be fooling himself. But I think Gambians to a large extent, are still still drawn drawn by emotional politics, even though they understand what politics is. They can tell you, yeah, yeah I know, this is the right thing to do. But when push comes to shove, you know, ethnic considerations, religious considerations, community considerations tend to play very prominently. But I guess that is 
a fact of life with all human beings. So Gambians are as sophisticated as anybody else is in politics, but they, they can also be emotional. Now, the reason why we have brought a uniquely diverse party to be able to mobilize the appropriate energies for the transformation of this country is to now tell Gambians, as a nation, we are too small and do not have time to spend on those unnecessary emotions in politics. It is time to look at Gambia as Gambia. Gambia, your Gambia, my Gambia, his Gambia. I'm sure we have three ethnic groups here. If it is safe, it is safe for all of us. Hmm? It is not only safe for Jolas and unsafe for Majagos or Sereres. It's safe for Dominic, everybody. The newest political party and 11th for that matter. Do you think realistically we have a chance come next elections? Citizens Alliance will emerge victorious. Why not? Are you sure? But that's my answer. Why not? You're asking me a question. Yeah, that's the point. That's the answer. Why not? If you do not have a chance, why don't we have a chance? What are your chances? Our chances are that we are going to get out of there and we are going to engage all the people in every nook and corner of this country with our political, you know, uh, wisdom. And we will share with them what theirs is. We will enhance ours and they will see our options and they will buy into those options and they will say to everybody in this country, late as they are, they are the people. We are wrapping up very soon. Congress, you said it's around February. Around February, yes. Are you interested to be the flag bearer or to stand or to contest? To tell you the truth, I am not thinking of contesting as flag bearer. Why? Let me tell you, I mean, people have to be honest. I, I had heart surgery in 2015, mm. open heart surgery. So I have a metallic valve in my heart. I am not sure having seen how stressful leadership is, I have the capacity to handle the stress of leadership based on especially how we want to engage and transform this country. Uh, and so the idea of contesting really has never crossed my mind, but the idea of establishing a platform where I'll give opportunity to people like yourself and many others to do that. Me? Well, you, I mean, you are Gambian. No. Are you not Gambian? <laughs> are you a Gambian? I'm Gambian. So when I say you, I mean figuratively okay. Gambian. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's clear. And th that's why when I say you and many others, okay. I mean figuratively Gambians okay. to, to, to express themselves in, in any form that they want to be able to express themselves and endear themselves to, to people and become elected as flag bearers and hopefully as, 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 as presidents. That, that's what I want, intend to do. But if it is critically necessary, there is no reason why I cannot uh, uh, contest for the position of flag bearer. But it will be based on necessity. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for talking to us. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other thing that you want to add into the interview? Well, if I have anything else to add, is that we are here, we are creating a platform a platform in which we will have new options for the transformation of this country. And that is why you notice that when I speak about other parties, I'm not speaking about personalities. I'm speaking about what it is that we will do as a government to make a difference in this country. So let them assess us on that basis and let them non-emotionally, unemotionally decide who it is that is best. And I'm sure if they do that, they will realize that we are really the answer to this country. Dominic Mendy is the interim party uh, leader of the Citizens Alliance. And I'm Omar Jaju, and this has been the exclusive interview with him. Thank you so much for watching. See you later.